So the last topic we're going to cover under section active long spans is long vaults. And these are essentially folded plates, uh, but they're on a curved surface instead of an actual folded one. And there are a couple of small distinctions uh, that we make when we're dealing with curved surfaces uh, that make them a special sort of category uh, of folded plates. In particular, we want to be careful to distinguish between what we call a short vault and a long vault. A short vault is basically uh, a, a, an extruded arch. In other words, it's a curved surface that is spanning uh, in its arched direction. And just as we saw when we were talking about form active structures uh, uh, last year, um, it will have not only a vertical component to the reaction, but it will also impart a thrust to whatever it's sitting on. So an arch, remember, converts a vertical load into a combination of vertical and horizontal forces uh, at its base. And it would require something like a, a tension rod or buttressing or something to keep the edges of the, of the arch from spreading out, right? The, the arch from collapsing. So when we talk about a short vault, we're basically talking about a folded plate that's folded, quote unquote, along a curved surface. So the key thing here is that even though we might get a little bit of arch action, right, we might get some forces flowing kind of down the, the, the curved surface, basically what we've done is we've created a folded plate that has a compression area on the top and a tension area on the bottom, but it's just along a curved surface instead of a folded one. Note that for a long vault, we have the same stabilizing horizontal beam at the edge that's trying to keep the, the arch or the, sorry, the vault from flattening out, right? That's there to maintain the shape. And also note that we're getting basically beam action instead of arch action. In other words, we have a region of compression at the top, region of tension at the bottom. The rest of the, uh, the surface is acting basically as a web. Right? Some of it will be in compression, some of it will be in tension, but mostly that kind of middle of the, uh, the long vault is functioning as a, a shear resistor, right? keeping the, the, the compression and tension areas uh, working together. So if you think about, uh, you have to kind of jump from thinking about a curved surface working like an arch to thinking about a curved surface basically being uh, a very, very particular class of folded plate and really working more like a beam uh, than like an arch. There are uh, ways that we deal with uh, long vaults that uh, make it clear that they are like folded plates. Right? The way they want to fail is they want to flatten out, lose their section modulus, uh, and, and, and therefore not be able to carry often their own dead weight. And so we'll have those horizontal beams or those stiffeners uh, at the edges. We might also have tension rods running across the base. So these are gonna look very similar to the tension rods that we would see in an arch, but notice that in this case, we've only got them uh, at the ends. We might also put in diaphragm walls, right? Again, trying to, to force the folded plate or the long vault to keep its cross-sectional shape. The long vault will work just like a folded plate. And here you see again the diagram of uh, isostatic stresses in tension and isostatic stresses in compression. That is exactly the sort of uh, arrangement that we would see in any folded plate, an area of compression on the top, tension on the bottom. And again, you can think of it basically like a, a, an I-beam that's kind of uh, projected onto a curved surface where we have a flange at the top, flange at the bottom, uh, and a web basically uh, in between. And we have a couple uh, ways, kind of rules of, of thumb for these. Um, we'll usually, again, the, the deeper the, the, uh, the, the vault, the stronger uh, it will be, or the, the more uh, depth, the more section modulus it will have. And we have two basically types of long vaults. We have circular ones uh, that are, have a proportion of about two to one, right? A radius to a diameter. And anything smaller than that we'll call a shallow vault. And you can imagine that using circular section vaults, you end up with quite high uh, vaults uh, as opposed to shallow vaults where you're gonna end up obviously with lower ones. There may be programmatic reasons for this. Obviously the, the deeper, the more efficient it will be structurally, uh, but also the more material we're using and the more space we're taking up.
And generally for these, and this is a rule of thumb that applies for folded plates as well, we'll have a height that's between 1 tenth and 1 eighteenth uh, of the span. So in the same realm as simply supported beams, where we expect to see a span to depth ratio of between 14 and 18, here again we're going to be uh, roughly in that, in that area. Um, examples here, this is a, a, a shallow vault. This is a, a more of a circular one, and you can see that there are architectural effects as well. A circular vault, of course, will also have more vaults for a given, uh, for a given uh, height than we would if we had an elliptical vault or something that was uh, a little bit shallower. In practice, uh, you can tell a, a long vault versus a short vault very easily uh, by the fact that uh, a long vault will not have buttresses. Right, a, a long vault is going to be stiffened often by an edge beam, which you see here. In this case, this edge beam is sort of mimicking the angle of the vault as it comes into the, um, the, the fold here, right? a kind of architectural uh, decision to make that sort of respond to the angle there. Really, that wants to be a, a horizontal uh, beam, though. Right? It wants to take not the vertical load of, of the, of the uh, vault, but the horizontal, the tendency for it to flatten out, the horizontal reaction. Um, you can see that this vault is perched on top of simple columns. So it, those columns are basically providing simple supports uh, at the ends of what will be beams. And here you can see, even though there's brick walls uh, on the ends, you can imagine that that vault is in, on the inside spanning from uh, one wall to the other, right? None of these walls are structural, and obviously none of these walls are structural, right? The, the glass above it uh, is a giveaway. This beam here is doing a couple things. One, it is taking some of the tendency of that corner to flatten out, and it is balancing it against the corner on the other end of the building. So that is basically a, a tension rod covered in concrete, and that's basically assisting the stiffening beams in keeping the making the vault keep its shape. You can also see that there are collar beams over the top here. And those again are, are holding on to the arch uh, or onto the vault, making it maintain its curvature, uh, even though it wants to flatten out uh, and, and fail that way. Again, like any surface structure uh, or like any folded plate structure, we're looking both at the overall kind of macro structural performance, uh, that is the long vault, and then we have this range of kind of uh, secondary structures that are forcing that vault to maintain, uh, to maintain its shape, right? to keep its curvature, to keep it from flattening out. Just like folded plates, we have a huge range of sections that we can use uh, for long vaults. We can certainly have one that is uh, continuous, where we have one surface, that's either curved on the top, curved on the bottom, or as we've seen, curved on the top, folded uh, on the bottom. Either one of those will work. In curved vaults, a lot of times we'll see a discontinuous vault. And again, remember when we were talking about folded plates, very often these will be on uh, uh, buildings like factories or warehouses where we would like to get some north light in to illuminate the, the space below. And you can see here, this particular long vault is shaped basically like a check mark, and that will have, again, tension flange at the bottom, compression flange at the top, and even though there's this long slot uh, down the middle, that kind of check mark shape will work as a beam. It has some depth, it has some separation between the, the top, if you like to think of it as the flange region, uh, and the bottom flange region. So even though it's not continuous, the, the vault basically doesn't know, right? And all it's feeling is the, the span from one end to the other. And we can fill this uh, bit in here with glass uh, and bring in lots of daylight. Uh, like folded plates, we can adjust the shape longitudinally so that we can get something a little bit more efficient. We can get uh, a little bit of what we call a beam arch again, uh, a beam that uh, is curved sort of away from the tensile region so that most of the beam ends up in compression. And here you can see this is a very, very simple arch, right? This is just basically a triangular arch where we've just given a little bit of elevation uh, to the center. We're, we're just kind of hacking it a little bit to get a little bit of the tension out of the, out of the system. And you can see then in the short direction, uh, we have these curved shapes. 
not functioning as arches, but rather functioning as long vaults, right? These are functioning as beams from these points to these points over here. And then finally, maybe most dramatically, we can do what's called freeform, where so long as we are careful about making sure that every one of those pieces has some depth, has some section modulus, deploys some of its volume uh, at its top, some of its volume at its uh, bottom, and finds a way to, to fix those two areas relative to one another, we can make it any shape we want, and the vaults certainly don't have to be the same each time. Constructionally, it's easier if we can use one bit of formwork for the whole building, um, but there may be situations where we want that, uh, that free formation, we want those different curves. Maybe the most famous example of that is this church by uh, Jorn Utzen, who you may remember as the uh, designer of the Sydney Opera House. Uh, after that project, he went back to Denmark, and maybe his second most famous building is this very small church just outside of Copenhagen. And here you can see that Utzen is interested in designing a sort of light scoop for the sanctuary. It also has some acoustic issues that he wants to work out with curved surfaces. And he does that basically, if you look closely, you can see that these are all concrete. Here in this section, you can see this shape here is one long vault. And even though it's a kind of strange section, if we're thinking about that as an arch in the short direction, it would never work, right? It's, it's not an, an arch shape at all. But that's not really what it's doing. What it's really doing is it's working as a beam. and It's spanning from bearing walls on this side of the church to bearing walls on this side of the church. And as long as its behavior is that of a beam, right, or, or a folded plate, then it doesn't really matter what its cross-sectional shape is. All that matters is that it has some area down here on the bottom, some area on the top, and a connecting or stiffening piece between. And again, this is just working the same as an I-beam. This is acting as a tension flange. This is acting as a compression flange. This is acting mostly as the web. It's not a particularly efficient I-beam shape, but Utzen is looking at solving several problems at once, right? Spanning the space, but also bringing in light, reflecting light off of curved surfaces, and getting some acoustic benefit uh, out, of the, um, out of the shape of the, of, the, of the vaults. And of course, getting a, an interesting architectural space. So these are the long vaults here. And even though we might think of this church when we walk into it as being organized longitudinally, these are actually spanning across the sanctuary, right? Not, a, not along them. We can uh, use curved uh, vaults, curved long vaults in particular, uh, to bring in uh, daylight. And again, we were talking about that, that sort of checkmark shape. Here's an example where we have uh, a continuously curved long vault, but the curve is designed to reflect probably north light off of an exterior surface and through a window beyond. Again, simple uh, performance, right? Flange here, flange here, webs sort of here. Those again are acting just as beams, right? Spanning the, the width uh, of the factory. Here you can see these are more symmetrical ones. And you can imagine these are of course not acting as uh, curved vaults, but they're rather acting as kind of gull wing vaults, right? Spanning from this column to this column. Architecturally, they make a continuous curve here, uh, but structurally because they're separated, the structural module is actually this gull wing shape right here. That leads us to maybe the most famous example of these that I'll get to in a minute, but to get to the Kimball, I wanna first of all show you a gull wing uh, long vault that maybe gives us a better understanding of how the Kimball actually works. Um, this is the Zarzuela race course by a Spanish engineer named Eduardo Torroja, uh, designed in the 30s. And you can see that if you're just looking at it, uh, when it's all put together, it looks like a series of very thin curved vaults, right? That the, the structural module looks like it's that curve uh, cantilevered from the back here. And you can see, just like we were seeing in folded plates, if you look at these from the end, deep over the root, thin at the edge, right? The exact right cantilever shape. But this is actually the structural module that Taroha was designing. Here is the support. It has this long lower flange of the, of the cantilever beam. 
you can see that the surfaces here are curved uh, and they're curved so that the, the, the shell or the, the, the vault gets deeper and deeper as it gets to the root. And you can see that the thickness is consistent throughout, but the depth of the fold gets greater and greater as it comes toward the, the column. And from this test, you can see very clearly that the structural module is this gull wing shape. And notice that it's a little bit thicker here, which is gonna act as the, now it's the compression flange, remember, because it's a cantilever. Um, and there is gonna be lots of reinforcing uh, here and here. Those are gonna act as the, the tension flanges uh, in the cantilever. Note that we have the kind of flipped over version of the isostatic stress lines. Compression is solid, tension uh, is dashed. Reinforcing goes right there. Here's a very similar project by Eliado Dieste uh, in Uruguay made out of concrete where you can see that he gets uh, this incredible uh, distance, right? This incredible cantilever span uh, based on the fact that the, the depth of that module uh, gives it a lot of section modulus, a lot of structural performance, uh, and the thickness of it is just the thickness of a thin shell of concrete. So we're taking away most of the weight out of a cantilever beam that would ordinarily be that deep. And all of that dead weight that we're saving allows for either a greater span or a greater loading. And here again, another example, and you can imagine now where this is going, right? That the gull wing is the sort of section. Uh, these guys on the edges are kind of leaning against the gull wing and supported themselves. Um, but there's this difference between the, the kind of architectural module, which looks to us like a vault, like a kind of Roman vault maybe, and the structural module, which Dieste is seeing as, as that gull wing. So the most famous, and I think the most kind of provocative example of this is the, is the Kimball Art Museum. When Kahn was designing it, he was thinking of Roman vaults, but he was thinking of Roman vaults architecturally. He liked the shape of that kind of enclosing ceiling that you get when you're in a, an ancient Roman building. The problem is that his architectural idea was to bring daylight in from the top of the vault and to spread it out on the walls of the museum using an aluminum reflector uh, that you see here. Now, the engineers that he was working with, Keystone Hood in Philadelphia, didn't know how to do this. They were trying to design these as short vaults, and they said to Colin, basically, you can either have the vault or you can have the slot in the top of the ceiling, but that slot is right where an arch or a short vault is gonna be most stressed, and you're not giving us any material there uh, to work with. So Kahn went to August Commandant, an engineer who he'd worked with before, and Commandant, so the story goes, looked at it, didn't do any calculations, and said basically, well, if you give me a little bit of concrete down here at the base, and if you give me a little curb up here around the skylight, it's no problem, right? We can make it work. And Kahn said, well, we have all these ideas for uh, different shapes, you know, which of these will work best, and Commandant says it doesn't matter, right? Khan goes away not sort of fully understanding what's going on. The shape they end up with is a cycloid, uh, which is the shape that you, you get if you put a point on a circle and roll that circle along a, a flat surface. Here's the circle. Here's the shape you end up with. It's kind of a gentle, almost elliptical form, not quite as monumental uh, as, a, um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a circular vault. Now, there are a couple of things here to notice, right, that, that sort of give the game away. First of all, notice what Commandant asked for. More concrete at the bottom of the vault and at the top of the vault, where the flanges are going to be, right? Where in a folded plate, we're gonna have the greatest compression and the greatest tension. Also notice that back here in the background is the profile of a beam that Commandant insisted on. And there's a great bit of correspondence where that uh, goes back and forth where Khan says, oh, you mean an arch, right, because it's curved. And Commandant says, no, I mean a beam. It's a cantilever beam that's actually trying to hold the corners uh, of, 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 of the roof down, right, to prevent them from flattening out. And if you think about it, it's kind of like a cantilever, thick in the middle, thin at the edges, right? It's literally holding the, the shape uh, of, of, of that vault. And they go back and forth. Finally, Khan says, well, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it an arch because architecturally it looks like an arch. So there is that beam at the end. Here is a little 
uh, glass window that Commandant wanted to show you that the wall here isn't doing any work. And the dead giveaway, right, the reason that we know that these are long vaults and not short vaults is these gutters on the last uh, of, of, the, of the vaults, right there, 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 way at the end, you can see one right there. Those gutters are much, much bigger than you would need to handle the rainwater uh, coming off of the, of the vaults. And you can see that they're, they're uh, deep in the horizontal direction. Those gutters are actually horizontal beams and they are stiffening the edge of that long vault, preventing it from flattening out, doing the same work that those curved collar beams are doing and holding the corners down these beams are there to hold the middle in, right? To keep the, the, the vault from flattening out. When Khan drew the Kimball, right? He drew it like as if they were Roman vaults. And you can see this is very clearly the architectural module, right? That's a gallery. The shape of the roof defines the space of the gallery. Here's that slot at the top that his first engineers thought was so, so problematic these kind of very beautiful aluminum reflectors that scatter the daylight uh, over the inside of the vault, all very nice. And then he's sort of corralled all of the ductwork in between these funny bits of concrete that the commandant asked for, right? They sort of uh, hold support and shelter all of the ductwork. So Khan always draws the Kimball like this uh, as architectural vaults. When commandant draws the Kimball though, uh, in one of his books, he draws it like this, and when you see Commandant's interpretation, what you realize is that this is exactly one of those gull-wing vaults that, that, was, uh, that structured the Zarzuela race course by Toroja, or some of those buildings by Dieste. And what Commandant did, the reason that he knew right away that he could make it work, is he saw this region of the vault as a tension flange, and he saw these little curves as compression flanges. And these great cycloid curves didn't matter to Commandant what shape they took as long as they were continuous and he could rely on those acting as webs. So the Kimball to architects is this series of concrete, almost Roman vaults. To structural engineers, it's a series of gull wing beams. And that difference, the way those two kind of um, uh, stagger on one another, right? The structural module is sort of syncopated with the architectural module. That to me is a great story about the architecture and engineering coming together uh, in ways that are sort of unexpected. Interestingly, Khan never understood this. He never understood that the shells, the, the vaults uh, of the Kimball uh, weren't actually short vaults, right? He insisted on, on talking about them as if they were arches. And Commandant finally stopped correcting him, right? But to Commandant, these are beams, uh, not, not vaults. And that to me is really the essence, not only of the, the long vault, right? That, that we're looking just for regions that we can call flanges and regions that we can call webs, but that's the whole folded plate concept basically in a nutshell. You can make whatever sectional shape you want. The only thing that matters is that you build up section modulus out of the shape, that you put enough area far enough from the shape's neutral axis, right, which is probably right about here, you put enough material far away from it that you can start to build up that resisting moment of compression on the top, tension on the bottom, shear in the middle, and that resulting vault can span quite a ways. The, the vaults at the Kimball span over 100 feet. Just for comparison's sake, here again, the gull wing uh, of Zarzuela, and you can see that that is basically the Kimball's structural module, just to a slightly shallower uh, curve. So those principles repeat over and over again, and you can see this in a lot of long span structures, right? A lot of long vaults that to us maybe look like they're architectural uh, you know, rooms or, or, or curves to engineers, doesn't really matter, right? They're maybe looking at it the other way around. And what they're most interested in uh, is the, the section and where they can get enough resistance to handle uh, the, the, the bending. Okay, that is uh, section active long spans in a nutshell. Um, we'll look a little bit at vector active long spans. So what happens when we take uh, trusses and kind of 
uh, set them at right angles to one another? What special behaviors do we get out of that? And then we'll begin looking at what we think of more traditionally as long spans, uh, surface structures where we're relying on the flow of forces uh, across a surface in multiple directions and the efficiencies that we gain with those.